Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. As you can see, my setup is a bit different because today I am sharing my updated perfume collection. Several months ago now, I filmed the entire collection. It came out to 65 bottles, which even shocked me. I'd never previously counted them. That included all of my travel sprays and roller balls. Well, since then, my collection has grown another 32 bottles of fragrance, as you can see behind me. Because I review fragrances for YouTube, a lot of brands send me fragrances complimentary. I still like to purchase fragrances myself, so of course it is just going to continue to grow. A pretty popular critique I see not just on my video, but every fragrance collection video I watch on YouTube is that nobody needs a collection this size because they're not going to last, and that is 100% accurate. In a couple of years, these fragrances will expire. If I don't use them, it will be a complete waste. So that is something to take into consideration when curating your collection. Of course, nobody needs this many fragrances. I need them. Anybody who reviews fragrances for YouTube needs them, but that's about it. I'm still currently storing all of my fragrances in the corner on a large bar cart, but it has been crowded for a while now, and it just makes it impossible to truly organize, but also just find what I'm looking for. So I'm in the market for some sort of shelf situation to put in the corner. I really need to do a declutter, go through all of my fragrances and get rid of the ones that are old that I just don't wear anymore. It's been a popular request, so I will most likely film it and turn it into a video. So in the future, you can expect a fragrance collection, declutter, and then sometime after that, I will film the entire thing once again. But for the purposes of today's video, I'm going to show you the 32 new fragrances that you didn't see in that first video. I'm not presenting these in any particular order. On the bar cart, I try to organize by brand, so that's what I'm going to do today. And the first fragrance I have here is Delina La Rose. I think this was one of the first fragrances I picked up in 2021. Oh, it's so beautiful. Fresh, aquatic, floral, perfect for spring summer. The perfect addition to the Delina franchise and the Parfum de Marly portfolio. It's a little bit sweet, but it's not cloying. It's not overpowering, but it has great longevity. Just a beautiful fragrance. It is so hard to beat the original Delina. I was a little bit scared when I first reviewed this because I wasn't sure if I was going to like it or not. I just love the original so much, but this was amazing. Just blew me out of the water. So good. I added two new Creed fragrances to my collection. Neither of these are truly new. They're just new to my collection. The first one is Love in White for Summer. I have loved this fragrance for such a long time. It is so beautiful. It just reminds me of a luxurious vacation. The original Love in White is also really pretty, but there's just something about Love in White for Summer. It's a little bit lighter, a little bit more tropical. But it's not just vanilla, coconut, sweet. It's not a tacky tropical. It's a very luxurious, very elevated tropical fragrance. So perfect for Miami. There's a lingering green apple note that makes it very unique and almost crispy, crunchy, like taking a bite out of a fresh apple. It's so simple and yet it is incredible. One of my favorites, definitely. I also have the Aqua Original Zest Mandarin. This was sent to me because they relaunched their Aqua Original collection. They added three new fragrances, I believe. This is one of the originals, the Zest Mandarin. I'm not typically drawn to fresh citrusy fragrances. I don't mind those notes as long as they're accompanied by something else that's a bit more overpowering. So this was never going to be my favorite, and it's not. But I must say, for somebody who really loves citrus, mandarin, you like zesty, fresh, something really light and clean, this would be beautiful. It's an incredible fragrance, it's just not something I ever feel drawn to wear. I'm never compelled to grab this. I knew it wasn't going to be my favorite, I'm still happy to own the bottle. I added a lot of niche fragrances to my collection that I didn't previously own, a lot of new brand discoveries, and a lot of that is thanks to you guys and your incredible suggestions and your recommendations. I take screenshots of all of them, so keep them coming down below in the comments section. But another new brand that I added to my collection that I love, another one of my favorite brands overall, is Montal Paris. This was the first one I purchased, Rose's Musk. Technically, I picked up the Discovery set first, which made me realize just how many incredible fragrances they had. I thought it would be really easy to narrow down a favorite. Instead, I added them all to my wish list, <laughs> which is very dangerous. But Rose's Musk is just one of my new favorite fragrances. It is feminine and floral. 
so classy. One of the most sophisticated fragrances in my entire collection. I just never get sick of it. I have a friend who would always wear Rose's Musk and every time I would always say, oh my gosh, you smell so amazing. I need this fragrance. It smells so good. I was just blown away by how great she smelled and I thought I knew a lot about fragrances. So she turned me on to Montal and I knew I had to add this to my collection. And the second Montal fragrance I added to my collection is Sensual Instinct. This has become a favorite. I just love wearing this. When I first discovered this brand, I thought this little clip was so cute. Now it drives me crazy because they're loose and it just makes so much noise. I hate it. <laughs> and I'm always afraid I'm going to lose it, but I love this fragrance. Some say it is a Baccarat Rouge 540 dupe, perhaps inspired by... It does have a little undertone of Baccarat Rouge 540 in that I think if you love that fragrance, chances are high you will also like Sensual Instinct at a fraction of the cost. But they are different. I think Sensual Instinct is a little bit sweeter. It's a little bit softer, which is funny because Montal fragrances tend to be very bold and in your face. In my opinion, on me, Baccarat Rouge 540 is so extreme. It's so bold. It just clings to clothing, hair. It lasts for days. Sensual Instinct is a little bit softer on me. Next are two of the most expensive fragrances I added to my collection, and I just noticed I've added a lot of these new perfume brands in pairs for some reason. But these came from Bond, New York. The first one is Greenwich Village. My new signature scent. I love this fragrance so much. I first discovered it because of your recommendation, so a huge thank you. It is so unique, delicious, addictive, intoxicating, all the adjectives. And I always read through the notes and I just don't even know how to describe it. It's so complex and interesting and there's not one note in particular that really stands out. It's very difficult for me to put this in a category that would make it easy to understand. Describing fragrances through video is sometimes very challenging, but with Greenwich Village it just feels impossible. I don't have the words to tell you how amazing it smells and it smells amazing. <laughs> and I always get a lot of compliments whenever I wear Greenwich Village. My husband loves it, my friends love it. That always makes you feel good. You know, when you really like a fragrance and everybody around you really likes it as well, that is not the case with Tribeca. I remember the first time I showed this to my husband. I thought it was amazing. I thought it was going to blow his mind and it, all he said was something to the effect of, smells like an old lady. It's a little bit sweet, also very addictive, like Greenwich Village, and it is so strong. This is a very powerful fragrance. It lasts for hours, has incredible projection and longevity. It's a little bit creamy, a little bit cotton candy. I would personally save this for evenings, although if you wanted to adopt this as your signature scent, it would be just a powerhouse signature fragrance. I could see why it is also very special. They're two of my most expensive fragrances, but I have zero regrets because they stand out so much. They elevate my collection. I love wearing them, and I find myself grabbing those two fragrances a lot more than some of the other fragrances in my collection, even though they're less expensive. If I don't use them in there entirely, I'm not really going to get my money's worth anyway. Those two fragrances I will absolutely use up every last drop. The next dynamic duo to join my collection is from Roja Parfums, and I'm going to begin with my favorite of the two. This is Elixir Parfum. Just an incredible fragrance. I am so happy. I feel so fortunate I discovered this because it is incredible. It's sweet, it's fruity, it's soft, it's so feminine. Just delicious. It is so elegant. It's hard to compare this with Greenwich Village, but I think Elixir might actually be my true signature scent. I think of the two, I've been wearing this on a daily basis more regularly than I have Greenwich Village ever since it joined my collection. It's just incredibly beautiful. It's so complex. There are so many incredible notes in this perfume. And it just reminds me of a princess perfume. That's the best way to describe it. It's not overpowering. It's not really strong, bold in your face. It's not overly intense. So I wouldn't call it the queen perfume. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more reserved, 
but so special that I feel like you will turn heads whenever you walk into a room wearing this perfume. And then we have Reckless. This is one of the new fragrances launched. I believe it launched this spring. This is more of an evening, seductive, kind of powerful perfume. So beautiful. The dry down is incredible. It's sweet and delicious. It reminds me a lot of Dior Hypnotic Poison, which is another fragrance that I love. Just a classic. It doesn't smell the same, but it kind of gives off that same, a little bit medicinal, hard candy sweetness. The last pair of perfumes comes from Penhaligans. This is the favorite, perfect for spring. It's feminine and floral, as you can see from this gorgeous bottle. I know it's kind of simple, it just has a velvet bow, but there's something about this when I look at it, it's ugh, just beautiful. I think this might be one of my favorite, if not my favorite perfume bottles in my entire collection. So cute. Mm. It's so fresh and floral. The favorite is like walking through a garden. You get a lot of flowers, maybe some herbs thrown in there. Lately, I pick up on a hint of dill, fresh dill. It's not like a dill pickle. <laughs> it's much prettier than that, but a little something something. I love it. It's so nice. For people who love floral fragrances, you have to check out the favorite. And then the first Penhaligon's fragrance I purchased this year was Changing Constants. This just blew me away when I was in the department store and I was trying to find something from the brand. It was my first time at the counter and I was just sniffing around looking for something to really wow me. And this is what stood out. And it is so nice. If you love the smell of baked goods and you like a little spice but nothing too spicy, nothing that smells like a men's cologne, I think you will really like changing constants. Can't wait until the seasons change already so I can get more use out of this. It just doesn't quite fit the season at the moment. Living in Miami, I do feel like I'm sort of limited when it comes to fragrance. I'll wear whatever I feel like that day, but because it is hot and tropical, I just don't always feel like wearing sweet, gourmand, warm, ambery, spicy fragrances. I like to save them until it cools down a little bit which is either December, January, or sometimes never. <laughs> I have three new perfume oils from Nest. This is another one of my favorite fragrance discoveries of 2021. My personal favorite is Turkish Rose. I also have the Seville Orange and the Madagascar Vanilla perfume oil. All three are incredible. I lean towards the Turkish Rose because it's not just rose, it has a hint of sweetness. It actually reminds me a lot of Delina from Parfum de Marly. There are a few key differences between a perfume oil and a perfume spray. I think it could be easy to get confused and think that since it's an oil, it must be 100% perfume, and that's not the case. In fact, a perfume oil and a perfume spray usually have about the same concentration of the fragrance oil, except in a perfume oil, it's in a carrier oil, and if it's in the spray, it has a lot of alcohol. As the alcohol evaporates off the skin, it gives the fragrance a lot of projection, which you don't get with a perfume oil. This is going to sit a lot closer to the skin, so you really have to get close to somebody to really smell it. And because it doesn't evaporate off the skin like a perfume spray, you don't really get top middle and base notes instead you get one constant fragrance so it should smell the same throughout the life of the fragrance just something to keep in mind when shopping for fragrances some people will prefer the perfume oil some people prefer the perfume spray i love both oils and sprays and i love to layer them i think it's the easiest way to help increase the longevity of your perfume and it doesn't have to be the exact same scent it can be something with similar notes for example, I really love this Turkish Rose Perfume Oil. If I layer a few drops on my skin, I can spray my Delina right on top or my Rose's Musk, and then it creates almost a customized fragrance. Along the back right here, you might not be able to see it right now, but I am going to show you close-ups. I have five Parfum de Marly fragrances. These are part of the men's line, but they're considered to be unisex, so they really can be worn by anybody. The first one I have here is Pegasus Exclusive. Next I have Herod. I talked about this in my favorite unisex fragrance video. It is so nice on both men and women. I could share this with my husband if I wanted to. Next I have Sedley. 
the original Pegasus. And last I have Greenly. This is a very green, fresh fragrance. I like it though, even though this isn't my typical style. But if I ever wear this, I will most likely layer it underneath something else. And then I did some rearranging. Next I have the One and Dunners in front here. So this next fragrance is from Atelier Cologne. It's Lemon Island. I first discovered this in the Sephora perfume sampler set. And it wasn't my first choice. The first choice was... Versace Dylan Turquoise, which is next. The sample was so nice, I had to go back and get it. I also talked about this in my favorite unisex fragrance video. Just reminds me of the beach. It's a very laid back, easy breezy, beach bum type of perfume. I think it is so perfect for summertime. Next I have Versace Dylan Turquoise. This is the latest interpretation of the classic Versace Dylan Blue. This just launched in 2021. And I think it is so beautiful for spring summer. It has lemon top notes, which I don't typically love, but it's very fresh and it's very aquatic, which I do love. Dylan Turquoise is a very fun, flirty fragrance. It's youthful and vibrant. Next I have Yes I Do from a brand I cannot pronounce. I will make sure it is linked down below. This is a very beautiful floral fragrance. And you might be wondering if I've ever talked about it before on my channel, and the answer is no, I haven't. I've been waiting until I create a bridal fragrance video, but I don't think this would be nice for the bride. I think this would be nice for mother of the bride. Not because it's old and too mature, but it's a, just a bit too conservative floral in my opinion for a bride. But I do think it would be very lovely for mother of the bride. Somebody who still wants to smell really special and wants a special perfume for the big day but doesn't want to overpower the star of the show. You know, you want to have understated elegance. Now, Arizona Bloom from Floral Street, this will knock your socks off. This is a very memorable fragrance. Caught me off guard the first time I smelled this because I just wasn't expecting it. I saw the bottle, I thought it would be fresh, citrusy, floral, not really my style of perfume, and yet it is warm and sensual and intoxicating, delicious. It makes my mouth water to smell this fragrance. There's almost a buttered kettle corn caramel scent to it. It is so nice. It's really pretty and I think it could be worn daytime or evening. I think it would be perfect for maybe a casual first date. It's available at Sephora and I don't think it's that expensive. It's not going to break the bank, especially when compared to some of the other fragrances. So I think for the price point, if I were looking for something that was more affordable but still had wow factor, Arizona Bloom. Here I have the latest fragrance launch from Tom Ford. This came out a couple weeks ago now, Soleil Brulant. I love this perfume. It struck me the first time I smelled it. I get notes of honey and jasmine. There's definitely neroli. I really like it. It's definitely kind of minty right away. When it dries down, I get a lot of the golden honey, and I think it is just really interesting and beautiful and not overly masculine. It's not a tobacco patchouli bomb like we're used to seeing from Tom Ford, especially when it comes to private blend. So this was a very nice departure in my opinion. Next I have Fantasia Veneta from Bulgari. This launched earlier this year. I believe it was spring. This is part of the Allegra collection from Bulgari. It's a beautiful, spicy, vibrant fragrance. It has rose, vanilla, patchouli. It's a lot of fun. It reminds me a lot of Portrait of a Lady. So if you really love that fragrance, I think chances are high you will also like Fantasia Veneta. Next, I have Maison Francis Kirchian Baccarat Rouge 540 Extrait de Parfum. I've always only owned the Eau de Parfum, never the Extrait, but this was sent to me complimentary from Twisted Lily. As you guys probably know, I have an ongoing partnership with them, so with the code Erin10, you'll save 10% off your order. They carry a ton of great niche fragrances, very exclusive, hard-to-find fragrances, so I'm happy to be able to offer you guys that little discount if anybody's interested. I love the Extra de Parfum. When I showed my husband this recently, he said it was very masculine. That's a men's cologne, he said to me. And I had to kind of argue and let him know that, no, it is not. It is definitely unisex. I think between the two, the Eau de Parfum leans a little bit more feminine because you get more of that cotton candy, sugar, vanilla note, 
Whereas in the Extrada Parfum, it has a woody accord that you don't find in the Eau de Parfum. And that is just very apparent for me. Do I still think women can wear this? Absolutely. I think this would be a power fragrance on a woman. Both are amazing in my book. You really can't go wrong. But they're different, and that's good to know because if you love the Eau de Parfum and you're thinking that, oh, the Extra, which is so much more expensive, is simply going to be a stronger, longer wearing version of the Eau de Parfum, you could be disappointed because they are so different. And here we have the newest fragrance to join my collection. This is from Fragrance Du Bois, my very first Fragrance Du Bois purchase. It's Minuit et Demi, their collaboration with Demi Rawling. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit spicy. It has tobacco and caramel, vanilla. Just a beautiful gourmand fragrance. I always like to get an outside perspective and when I showed my husband Minui et Demi, he was so impressed. He loved this fragrance. I could see myself eventually maybe handing this off to him because I think he'll just get so much more use out of it. The problem is I'll need to get it back when fall hits and it's a little bit cooler outside because that's when this fragrance is going to shine in my collection. This is another fragrance that is going to be so much better in fall winter. It's Ouverture from Zerjoff. I love this perfume so much. It's very interesting. It's a little bit sweet, kind of spicy. It has this milky quality as well. It's not a creamy vanilla. It truly smells like milk. <laughs> and it's very chocolatey. I love it. It's so unique. I don't own anything else that smells like Ouverture. This was a Demi Rawling recommendation. I'm so happy I added this to my collection. And thanks to all of you guys, I have some other fragrances from Zerjoff on my wish list. Another fall winter favorite is Angel Share from Killian. It's sweet. It's sensual. I think this could be an evening fragrance for fall winter. It's just warm and cozy. It has cognac, cinnamon, vanilla. It's just a delicious fragrance. This makes me want to get wrapped up in soft, cozy, very warm blankets, sit by the fireplace, watching an incredible movie, eating s'mores, and drinking hot chocolate during the holidays. And then the last three perfumes I have to share were sent to me complimentary in PR. I don't really know a lot about them. I believe they are all available at Sephora. So this is from Ellis Brooklyn. It's the Eau de Parfum B. I've seen a couple of these. I think there's one called Salt. This one is the bright orange bottle. I did smell this when it first arrived. I'm gonna smell it again. It's been a while. It's kind of nice at first. I might need to try this on the skin. At this point, I've smelled so many fragrances. I can't really pick out anything. The rest of these I'm very familiar with because I wear them pretty regularly or I've worn them a handful of times. This one I did not like when I first tried it on the blotter so I didn't wear it. It has a lot of sweet honey right away which I really love but the dry down was just amber and it was a very intense sort of cloying sweet amber. I remember thinking that it would probably give me a headache, which is why I kind of stuck it in the corner somewhere and I didn't even put it with the other fragrances. Here I have Maison Louis Marie number 12. Boozeball, I think is how you say it. I have another Maison Louis Marie fragrance, Bois de Ballincourt. That one I really like. It's very different, but I think it's really nice. It's kind of minty, cooling. It's nice for fall, very woodsy. Along with the Eau de Parfum, they also sent over a perfume oil and I dabbed it on my arm and I think it scented the entire room. So I'm a little bit nervous to spray this. The perfume oil is very strong. And I think this is more, I believe it's supposed to be unisex, but it's more of a masculine fragrance. Yeah, this is not really right for me. I think my husband really liked it. He asked me what I sprayed in the entire room and I just dabbed the oil on my arm. And the very last new fragrance in my collection is Hanami Fleur. I received this in a PR kit from New Face <laughs> and I didn't really understand it, but I Googled this fragrance. I guess it's been around for a long time and it's really popular. It's kind of interesting. 
sort of smells like waffles. Not sweet syrupy waffles. But it's kind of strange. It's so unlike anything else that you kind of want to keep smelling it because you're trying to figure out the fragrance. I have no idea what category I would put this in. Interesting. I'm so glad they sent it over so I could experience it, but that is one that I will most likely be decluttering, gifting to somebody else. So there you have it, my updated fragrance collection. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Leave me your comments, questions down below. I would love to hear from you guys what is your favorite fragrance that you saw today. Or maybe you have a favorite fragrance that you added to your collection. Let me know down in the comment section. We will keep the conversation going there. As always, I will be linking everything mentioned. All of these fragrances will be linked down below in the description box for your convenience. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell.